Hi, welcome to the AWS channel. I'm Jeff Bodie, and I couldn't pass up the chance to combine two of my favorite topics, IoT and AI. So today, I'd like to talk to you about running machine learning inference and Gen AI models at the edge with AWS IoT Greengrass. Imagine a manufacturing facility where equipment failures cost $50,000 or more per hour in downtime. Businesses in this situation face the same fundamental challenges. How to process critical data with minimal latency, operate reliably without constant connectivity, and manage bandwidth costs, all while maintaining security. This is where Edge ML with AWS IoT Greengrass changes everything. By running machine learning inference directly on Edge devices, whether that's on factory floors, production lines, or remote equipment, Organizations can make intelligent decisions in milliseconds, operate autonomously during connectivity gaps, and dramatically reduce data transfer costs. Today, I'll not only demonstrate how to implement traditional machine learning inference at the edge using Greengrass and the Onyx format, but I'll also explore how the next generation of edge intelligence, including generative AI capabilities, is pushing these boundaries even further. You'll learn how to deploy models that can detect anomalies, inspect visual quality, and generate insights directly at the edge where your data is created. We'll start off by talking about machine learning at the edge fundamentals, including the Onyx cross-platform runtime that's useful for packaging and running the models. From there, I'll get into a few use cases and then dive into the architecture used for this scenario. Next, I'll show you a demo using this architecture to do machine learning inference at the edge. I'll touch on the natural expansion of ML inference at the edge, which is running Gen AI models, and how that could be helpful. Lastly, I'll cover some implementation considerations and give you some next steps to dig in deeper. AWS IoT Greengrass is a service that makes this possible. It extends AWS capabilities to your edge devices through a flexible component-based architecture. I like to think of Greengrass as an easy button for managing services, functions, data streaming, and secure communications at the edge. It actually has two components, a runtime for edge devices and a cloud component, and they work together to provide this easy button. The Onyx format ensures your machine learning models can be optimized for edge deployment regardless of which framework they were built in. Onyx can also be combined with Amazon SageMaker Neo to help compile models for optimal hardware compatibility. And that's a common usage model. Each of these you see are valid industry verticals where machine learning at the edge can be very helpful. And they're just a subset of the many scenarios for this technology. In the case of manufacturing, Having an ML model analyze sensor data for vibration and temperature patterns could reveal potential failures days or weeks before they occur. For retail, edge devices running ML models can analyze shelf images and sensor data locally, so you can detect low stock situations in real time without requiring sending any sensitive data to the cloud. A wind farm operator could deploy edge devices running green grass with specialized ML models. That saves the operator on specialized tech visits as well as providing faster response to critical issues. In healthcare, rural clinics with limited connectivity are making use of portable diagnostic devices that can provide preliminary analysis of medical images, helping identify urgent cases that require specialist attention. Now let's get into how the architecture for these scenarios would work. I've somewhat simplified this diagram, but when it comes right down to it, this doesn't have to be a complicated architecture. Essentially, what you've got here is a machine learning model. And for my demo, I just used one already built because why reinvent the wheel? And that model and any other relevant artifacts are stored in S3. You've got an edge device that's defined in IoT core as a thing and also configured as a Greengrass core device. On the edge device itself, you've got the Greengrass components, the Onyx runtime, and an inference component to actually do the work. It's really just that simple. Of course, you can add on quite a bit to this, but at the heart, this is what you need. This architecture allows you to both take action at the edge, running machine learning inference and interacting with this via other Greengrass components and local resources, and you can send data to AWS and take advantage of the additional resources available there. 
This isn't an either-or situation. You can do what makes sense at the edge, perhaps cutting costs and bandwidth on data, and then send key information to the cloud for long-term storage and additional analytics. The right solution often isn't all one thing, but rather a hybrid architecture. Now, rather than spending a lot of time on setup, I've already configured the environment so we can focus on the key components and results. Keep in mind this is a simplified demo that illustrates the core concept, running machine learning inference directly on an edge device. I'll show you how the three main pieces are configured and combined to work together. The IoT thing, the Greengrass configuration, and the model. Alright, I've already created an IoT thing representing our edge device right here and added it to a thing group for convenience. Uh, I could have done this without the group, but having a group or nested groups allows you to organize and manage your edge devices more easily. Let's take a quick look at the certificate associated with this device. That's what allows AWS to securely communicate with it. As you can see here, it has a couple policies attached to it, and they provide it with the permissions that Edge device needs to interact with AWS in a secure fashion. All right, now that we've seen how the device is defined as an IoT thing, let's take a look at how it's set up as a Greengrass core device. Here in Greengrass, you can see our core device is registered and healthy. That's a good thing. But the magic happens in these components that I've deployed. So let's take a look there. If we look at components, we can see that we have multiple available for our use in deployments to Greengrass devices. We have our own custom components we've created, in this case, a machine learning model. And we also have various public components that you can pick from to run on your Greengrass device. In this case, let's take a closer look at the deployment I used for this demo. If we go into revise, we can see the components that are part of this deployment. Now essentially, it's deploying the ML model and an updated version of the CLI if there is one. Now for this demo, I chose to have my actual application that's running the ML inference, something I would deploy and then manually execute. I could just as easily have made that app a separate deployable component and managed it through Greengrass with a life cycle of its own. I've seen both scenarios and there are good reasons for each of them. One thing I want to call out though is the actual ML model here is a squeeze net model in Onyx format. I chose both of those for this demo because they're good performers for edge devices. They're lightweight, and this particular model is only about 5 meg in size, but it can recognize over a thousand different objects, making it perfect for edge deployments. And the Onyx format is an open standard that allows models trained in various frameworks to run efficiently on edge devices. Let's take a quick look at how the ML model is configured as a Greengrass component. If we drill down on the model here, there we go we can see this model is really two files. For this demo, I just had this component deploy a zipped model and a Jupyter notebook that I converted into a Python executable on the Edge device. And both of these artifacts are stored in an S3 bucket. The important thing for every Greengrass component is the recipe. So let's take a look at that. And just like in cooking, the recipe is uh, how this gets put together. Essentially, the recipe is just a JSON or YAML file that describes all the metadata and behavior for the component. This recipe defines the two files and has them being deployed to the Greengrass core device. You could just as easily have an application bundled with this squeeze net model and configure the life cycle to run the app, perhaps every minute, to perform a task. In this case, we're not interacting much with Greengrass, but we could just as easily use it to stream results to AWS for further analytics and storage or to run Lambda scripts making decisions at the edge based on the inference results. Here we go, back to our slides. 
wanted to show you this. Uh, this is the actual image the demo is going to process. It's a cat who seems to be thinking, look how cute I am. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure that's what mine are thinking a lot. So let's see this in action on our Edge device. Our Edge device in this case is uh, just an Ubuntu instance representing any Edge hardware you might deploy. You could just as easily use a Raspberry Pi or an NVIDIA Jetson Nano or something similar. Now this Python script that I'm about to run is running completely locally. There's no cloud connectivity needed for the inference. And there we have it. The model has used the Onyx runtime, analyzed the image locally, and determined it's an Egyptian cat with 68% probability, uh, with some other feline classifications as alternatives. And I'm glad it didn't decide it's a mountain lion. It definitely doesn't look like that. So some quick thoughts on the design for this demo. This architecture can also scale to thousands of devices with AWS IoT Greengrass, even though there's only one device involved here. You can maintain and update your models centrally in AWS and deploy them selectively to your devices in the field. And while identifying cat breeds might seem simple, this same architecture supports those critical business applications we discussed earlier. The difference between detecting a cat and detecting a million dollar equipment failure is just the model you deploy. Now, while the inference demo we just saw represents today's common edge machine learning implementations, the next evolution is already happening, bringing generative AI capabilities directly to edge devices. This isn't about running massive models on small devices. It's about deploying specialized, optimized generative models that solve specific business problems where they occur. So don't think so much of running your favorite chatbot on these edge devices, but rather something like the squeeze net model I used to identify that cat. Here are three practical examples that are emerging today. First, in manufacturing, edge devices are now generating detailed equipment reports and maintenance instructions from sensor data, all locally on the factory floor. So a technician could be working on a problem and receive generated repair procedures without cloud connectivity. And that could be a key factor in facilities with restricted networks and help that technician solve the problem much quicker. Second, in field operations, we're seeing devices that enhance low quality sensor imagery through local generative models. Think of security cameras that can generate enhanced versions of low light footage or inspection systems that can fill in missing details from partial scans, all without sending sensitive data to the cloud. Third, customer facing applications are using edge generative AI to create personalized experiences while preserving privacy. Retail kiosks can generate product recommendations without sending customer behavior data to central servers. And what makes all of this possible is the same AWS IoT Greengrass infrastructure I just demonstrated. That simple component-based architecture we looked at earlier allows for deploying optimized generative models to edge devices. You can utilize a service such as SageMaker Neo to handle the critical optimization process. And the Onyx format supports both traditional and generative models, giving you a consistent approach to both. The boundary between what requires the cloud and what can run at the edge continues to shift. And we've seen increasingly sophisticated AI capabilities available right where your data gets generated. For organizations already implementing Edge ML with AWS IoT Greengrass, adding these generative capabilities is a natural evolution that can leverage what you already have in place. Well, let's talk about some quick tips on implementing a solution like the one I've discussed today. First, optimize aggressively. Use Onyx format with AWS SageMaker Neo for hardware specific optimization. For complex models, consider knowledge distillation to create smaller, faster versions that maintain core functionality. Match hardware to your inference needs. CPU only devices work for many apps, but you might need to consider GPU or specialized accelerators for more demanding workloads. Also consider power constraints for battery-operated devices. 
Greengrass supports a wide spectrum from Raspberry Pi to industrial gateways, so you could make use of the same architecture for multiple devices. Now, one thing I definitely want to mention is that security is non-negotiable at the edge. Use AWS IoT certificate-based auth and encrypted communication. Also leverage component-based deployment for targeted updates without full system reinstallation. Be sure to monitor your device health. You can use something like AWS IoT Device Management and also make use of IoT Device Defender and Device Advisor to help with security monitoring and management. But however you do it, be sure to focus on security because it doesn't matter how great your application is if your security is compromised. Finally, optimize costs across the entire system. Edge processing tends to reduce cloud data transfer and compute costs. Don't send everything to the cloud unless it's absolutely needed. Take action at the edge where you can and send only what's needed to the cloud. For example, you might be monitoring video for quality assurance for an assembly line. And instead of sending all that video data to the cloud, you might use ML inference to judge whether a problem might be present, then just send that data onto the cloud for additional processing. One thing I'd like you to keep in mind so you don't have to have an earth-shattering use case like I've discussed to get started with machine learning at the edge. Have fun with this. You're only limited by your imagination as to what you can do with this technology and the general architecture I showed you. It's amazing what you can come up with on a weekend with a spare Raspberry Pi and a creative mind. I provided links to a couple workshops here that should help you get started on this. One for learning Greengrass and one for SageMaker to train and manage models. So use this for your business or use it for fun, but get out there and play around. With that, I hope you enjoyed this session and found it useful. Thanks for watching.